Uh, for my first video, I want to talk about Capone Beige and the potential of the other supernova in the upcoming arcs. Due to the character development and the details that we've gotten about Beige and, um, you know, his history, his Devil Fruit abilities, his motives, you know, it's really brought the other supernovas to light in a way. Uh, maybe the ones that you didn't think about because now that we've got all this with Capone and he's become a really liked character within the community, you know, they see a lot of potential in the other supernova going forward. The reason I want to talk about this is because what we've seen from Beige throughout this arc has really surprised me and I see some potential in the future of Supernova that I might have dismissed in the past just like I did with Beige. Going into the Zoark and Whole Cake Island I definitely didn't expect Beige to be the next Supernova that got the spotlight in the storyline. Uh, after Trafalgar Law. Throughout the New World so far, we've seen a heavy focus on Law and Eustace Kid mainly. Law has been very prominent in most of the arcs in New World after we left Fishman Island, and Kid has been sprinkled about the story in the post-arc kind of details that we usually get. And it's clear that Oda has something in plan for Kid that is very big. And through these little details of Kid that we've seen, Oda has definitely been setting up what his role will be in the Wano arc that we'll go to after Whole Cake Island. Because the most recent time that we saw him, he was beaten and battered up in a cage and left there by Kaido. I think the first time we saw him after the time skip was during the Punk Hazard arc when he was with Killer and Apu, I believe, watching the the live stream video of Smiley going on a rampage on Punk Hazard uh, with alongside the other underground brokers. The next time we see him is after Dress Rosa when Kaido is finally revealed and he drops down in front of him and that leads up to his fate on Wano when he's left in the cage by Kaido because he clearly lost that fight, he tried to pick a fight with him but it clearly did not go well. It's very clear that Oda has been highlighting him throughout the New World uh, since his reveal and after the time skip alongside Law. Uh, his introduction where he was fighting alongside Luffy and Law against the pacifista, you know, that was a pretty clear indicator that he was going to be an important character in the future, especially since he had the current highest bounty at the time, even higher than Luffy's pre-time skip. And this is kind of where the point of this video comes in because out of the supernova that were highlighted quite heavily in Saboda, you know, some of the others didn't really get the highlight. There's some characters that I really enjoy and want to see more of, like Jewelry Bonner because I think she's a really interesting character. But with this recent arc and Capone Beige, it's clear that there's a lot more to each supernova than Oda has originally let on in their introduction scenes. And when Beige was introduced, he was pretty low down on my list of the supernova that I enjoyed and wanted to see more of. That's mainly because it's pretty clear where he gets his inspiration from, you know, he's a mafioso type of character, and his name's even Capone, so, you know, it's not very subtle what his inspirations are. So you could kind of guess what sort of style he was from his introduction, but the other mysterious characters such as like Killer and Hawkins and Jewelry Bonnie, they kind of caught my attention more. So he wasn't at the bottom, I'd say Apu and maybe a Rouge were below Capone, but you know, I was definitely interested in a Rouge because he was clearly from some sort of Sky Island which is pretty interesting so I was always quite interested in that character so I'll probably put him above Capone during the introduction scenes but even a Rouge became kind of a meme throughout the community as Whole Cake Island has now shown with a lot of exposure to Beige you know, there's a lot more than meets the eye to each and every supernova, or at least that's what I'm hoping, because I see a lot of potential in them now, going forward. And 
even though Arouge hasn't been in this arc himself, personally, you know, we did get some details around the start of the arc in the Seducing Woods when it was stated that out of the few supernova over the two years that have tried to invade Big Mom's territory and start something, Arouge was the only one who was able to beat a sweet commander until Luffy went there. So when that happened, that definitely, definitely perked up the ears of the fan base in terms of Arouge's potential because no one really thought of him that much before that, but he clearly has some strength to him. <laughs> And you know, that was the start of the um, Arouge Pirate King meme throughout the community, which is quite funny. So my point is that throughout this arc in Whole Cake Island, we've seen that the supernova that weren't really on people's radar have definitely got some massive potential in them to be important to the story, especially as we've, as we've seen with um, Capone Beige throughout this arc, and he's become a very instrumental part into the success or the possible success of the Straw Hats achieving their goal in this arc. And learning more about Capone's motives and his backstory and what his overall goals are, you know, he has become one of my favourite supernova. You know, he turned out to be this really cool, like calm, collective, you know, plotting kind of character that sticks to a plan and sees it through and you know you need that kind of strategist on your side especially when you're going up against a Yonko so you know this arc could have turned out very 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 differently if Capone was not there like Luffy and the others probably wouldn't even stand a chance at the tea party without Capone as shown in the most recent chapters and this is where the potential comes in for the supernova because it's clear that Oda has been slowly setting up all of the supernova well, at least most of them, to be in the Wano arc uh, in some form or another to be either against Kaido or with Kaido because we know that Apu and X-Drake are now underneath Kaido. Uh, it's clear that Eustace Kid clearly refused to join Kaido and ended up getting his ass beat. So that, you know, definitely wasn't the best route for Kid to take, probably. But once we get to Wano, you know, we'll see supernova versus supernova and we'll get extended looks into these characters and find out a lot more about them because there's definitely going to be a heavy focus on the supernova in the Wano arc. You know it wouldn't really make sense for Oda to set all these pieces up um, on the way to Wano and then not utilize them to their full potential because we know from the Shibodi introduction of the supernova that these characters are definitely going to be an instrumental part in the storyline for the new world. But I don't really know where Oda is going to take Beige from this point because as we've seen in the few recent chapters, Capone's a really loyal character and he's tanking most of the damage from Big Mom at the moment in order to protect everybody else, which is really unexpected because, you know, when the Capone Luffy Alliance was first set up however many chapters ago there were a lot of people thinking that Capone was going to screw them over because of his history with taking down figureheads and leaders of other organizations so a lot of people didn't really expect Capone to act like this so it's really interesting to see actually I should uh, probably take that back because you know Capone has been under Big Mom for I think a year he even married into the family and has a kid with one of Big Mom's daughters. So, you know, it's not just like he's coming to Whole Cake Island like Luffy has with intentions of uh, disrupting Big Mom. You know, he's kind of done it in the shadows, but he actually has familial ties with Big Mom now. And he's still trying to fuck her over. We also see when the alliance between... Uh, Capone's fire tank pirates and Luffy is formed you know he states that as soon as the mission is accomplished uh, and they're escaping then they go their separate ways and it's every man for himself so I really don't know if Oda is going to end up bringing Beige along to the Wano arc to be with the other supernova as well because I'm not sure it would make the most sense to put more focus on Capone 
after he has after he's had such an emphasis in the whole Cake Island arc and in Wano, we're gonna have so many supernova to focus on at one time. So, you know, I don't know if that's the best move and I don't know if Capone's really interested in going to Wano with Luffy because you know, what's what's he gonna do there? What's his goal? It doesn't really I guess it kinda lines up with wanting to just cause havoc and take out the leaders but you know they're already struggling with big mom so you know the plan failed how the fuck are they going to take out kaido as well uh, if i'm remembering correctly then the supernova that are going to be in wano already from the plan that oda has already set out through the story is going to be luffy and zoro of course uh, we know X Drake is under Kaido. Um, there are theories that he might be one of Kaido's free calamities. Um, we know that Kid is, you know, battered and left in a cage, and we don't know where Killer is. Obviously, Killer is um, part of Kid's crew, so we don't know if Killer has betrayed Kid out of fear of Kaido, and he's now working under Kaido, or he's also in the the cage with Kid. Um, we also know that Apu is now under Kaido because we saw him speaking on the Denden Mushi um, at some point in the Zoark when we first found out about uh, Kid's fate. But the thing that uh, Capone's development has really got me interested during the whole Cake Island arc is because he was so low down on my interest in the supernovas, but as usual, Oda's, you know, given this really interesting character development that has made Capone, you know, really one of the stars of this arc. So, going into Wano with this many supernova in play at once in one arc, I mean, there's not been this many ever, I mean, except for Shibodi when they were first introduced, but that was, that was kind of a quick, you know, fleeting little thing we just kind of got introduced to him and nobody really got a heavy emphasis on them except really law and kid in their first introduction but you know even that wasn't anything special i mean we didn't really dive into law and his character until after the time skip and the most we've seen of kid is also after the time skip you know seeing what he's been up to so one of really got me hyped now because the amount of focus that's going to be on the supernova and not just not just Kaido's side of it or the, you know the pirate uh, ninja mink alliance or you know even the residents of Wano Kuna what Oda has done with Capone has made the potential of the other like less hyped supernova to really come through and shine it definitely doesn't make sense to have every supernova in one arc at a time so Oda's probably saving, you know, a Rouge and Jewelry Bonner for their own arcs, or, you know, he probably has something in mind for the story, but with Capone being the only other supernova in Whole Cake Island, you know, he's, he's getting quite a large focus right now. So, the potential for the supernova in Wano, and even past Wano, with the supernova that won't be there, you know, has really got me interested, because Oda's been able to take one of the lowest uh, interesting characters to me personally and taken to basically the top tier of the supernova in terms of interest and character not in terms of power but you know even from these last couple chapters with big father we see that capone definitely has some you know fighting force behind him as well this upcoming arc has definitely been a long time coming because you know, after the time skip, we got a very heavy focus on law, and I doubt that Oda is going to be able to focus that much again on another single supernova. I don't know if there's enough time to do that, uh, especially in Wano when there's going to be, I think, five, six supernova in play, maybe more if Beige joins or Jewelry Bonnie and Arouge show up somehow. Uh, we've not seen them to have any connections to Wano yet. Except when uh, Arouge did see Kaido above the Sky Islands, so he was obviously very close to Kid at that time and Kaido. So who knows what happened with that? We haven't really seen Arouge personally since then. We only got that detail about the time when he went to Whole Cake Island. 
you know, it's, it's not very surprising that the supernova are getting focused on because it was clear from their introduction in Shabode that they were going to play a big role in the story because, you know, you can't just group them together with Luffy and Zoro and say that they're definitely not important characters because to get to that level uh, pre-time skip, you know, they've definitely got something in them. But what is surprising about uh, the supernova is that Oda's even managing to make the ones that weren't really on people's radar. Uh, people didn't really think much about Capone or Arouge, but, you know, the detail that we got about Arouge in this arc, you know, that that really sent people a bit crazy about the potential of Arouge in the future. And now with Capone's character development, you know, it really shows the potential for the supernova that we have even more interest in in the future, like... What's going to happen with Kid? What's Kid's backstory? What's Kid's full extent of his Devil Fruit ability? Because, you know, we know Capone had the Castle Castle Fruit, but with his ability Big Father uh, turning into a giant castle himself, you know, there's definitely going to be a lot more to the other Supernova's uh, Devil Fruit abilities that we definitely haven't seen or haven't even considered yet. Even with the other Supernova characters that you still might not even have as much of an interest in. Like, for example, Apu has always been at the bottom of my list, and he still is. So, now that he's going to be in Wano, I'm wondering if Oda is able to do the same thing that he's done with Capone, where even though he's at the bottom of my list in terms of the supernova that I'm interested in, you know, there's some possible hidden potential there, and... Oda could develop Apu's character so that he reaches um, the high points of the supernova as well. Overall, this really got me thinking about every other supernova that we've yet to see developed. It's It's been a very long wait to see what the supernova are going to do in the story because, you know, there wasn't really any focus on them in Fishman Island. Then in Punk Hazard and Dress Rosa, it was basically just all about law, which is a long time to focus on one supernova. So, one of my high points of Whole Cake Island so far has been the emphasis on Capone in the last 10, 15 chapters, or you know, however many it's been since they formed the Alliance. So now it's just really interesting to think about who's going to shine next. I mean, we know Kid's definitely going to be a large focus of the Wano arc. But with so many other supernova there at the same time, we don't know how much development each one of them is going to get, and we don't know exactly the extents of their abilities or their personalities because, you know, all aspects of Capone's character has been fleshed out in the Whole Cake Island arc, and it's really exciting to think about what these other supernovas are going to become, you know, what our perception of them is going to be after we learn more details about them and in terms of where they rank in most liked to least liked supernova so far. So this is the end of the video. It's my very first video that I've made about One Piece and posting it onto this channel. So I apologize if it's not the best quality. I know my microphone isn't the best and you know I'm still building up my skills of being confident of speaking into a microphone. Uh, it's not really something that I've ever done before. But, you know, I'm hoping I can look back on this video however long into the future after I've made more and think, wow, that's really shit and I've improved. I'm hoping for that to be the case at least. So, thanks for watching if you made it all the way to the end and look forward to my future videos.